Well, the reason I'm spending all this time on it is that I think that people are going to die as a result of what the FDA is doing. And to me, that's a travesty that an organization that's supposed to be protecting the health of Americans is actually endangering our health. Um, I, that, that upsets my sense of justice in the world. My impression initially, and if, had, if I had not been sick, was, well, so I don't take a one a day, my little Fred Flintstone vitamin, so what? The people that I know, people will die because they depend on these to live. It's they part of their, why. they depend on so. certain high potency vitamins, amino acids, herbs, certain homeopathic remedies. This is not a debate about consumer access to the products, whether it's somebody who has AIDS, HIV, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, you name the condition, there are people who are seeking alternative therapies and FDA fully supports that pursuit and access to those products. It's very disturbing. Um, they basically want to make vitamin, take vitamins off the shelves in your markets or your health food stores or your vitamin stores and make them only prescription. I believe that this is fundamentally a human rights, personal rights, civil rights issue. We know enough to spend less and feel better, and now is the time. admirable individuals, as true Americans, citizens, and patriots. Together, a miracle is possible. There's an untapped power inside of each one of us, but it's time to call it up. It's time to invoke that power. This really is no different in 1776, when a tiny minority of less than 3% succeeded in establishing the first free country in the history of the world. We're, we're sitting around here today just talking about, we have nothing to do on Sunday afternoons to talk about vitamins and the FDA, is that right? And so what we're talking about is what a lot of people don't know about. A lot of people that we're talking to, because all of us are so, well, some of you closer than others, but it's the problem that exists. That, um, Russell, you were talking about common perception earlier. What does that mean exactly? Well, I was trained as a physician as a, and as a scientist uh, to a particular point of view, and that point of view was that the best we could hope for was to suppress the signs and symptoms of ill health with medications, uh, pharmaceuticals, with surgery, with radiation. Uh, about 20 years ago, I heard that maybe diet and activity and habits and attitudes uh, and targeted supplementation, nutritional supplementation, could help people. And of course, I thought that must be a bunch of bunk. Hmm. And I went, as a skeptic, to learn the fatal flaws in that point of view. And maybe I stayed too long, but maybe I found a substantial body of information, of scientific information, of clinical information, of outcome information that I hadn't been exposed to in medical school in Boston or at the National Institutes of Health, where I was then on the senior staff. And when I found this information, uh, it, it felt essential to me as a physician who had taken an oath to put patients welfare first and to first of all do no harm to learn that a stitch in time does save nine to learn that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure uh, I, I felt um, uh, rather um, internally motivated to change my career to help document what seemed to me like very promising approaches now that's a different point of view than the worldview that I learned in medical school. The worldview that I learned in medical school, medical school is the worldview that most of my colleagues, most of my acquaintances at the Food and Drug Administration, for example, still hold. So when acquaintances of mine at the FDA seem to have a woeful lack of understanding of how substantial the body of information is that supplements can safely and sometimes effectively reduce human suffering in a cost and human effective way, I understand their lack of understanding because I too had that lack of understanding. And you're an MD and a PhD. It was a two for one sale, yes. Okay, two for one sale. Now, the reason I mention that is because you might want to know what type of doctor he is, and he's a, he's a medical doctor as well. My, my grandmother says I'm a good doctor. You're a good, you, your grandmother better say you're a good doctor. And Stephen, mm -hmm. over here to my left, that's my left. I'm an organic well, chemist by you my, are. my, is my that, training. Yeah. And what does that mean exactly? Well, I learned how 
how molecular structures and chemicals interact with each other. And so my focus in looking at health was to look at the role of the biological chemicals in the health process. And that led me into studying uh, things like amino acids and vitamins and nutrients and, and basically the, the, the chemicals in our diet that keep us healthy, to look at those as preventives in disease or as curatives in disease. Okay, then let me just ask this because this is one thing I wanted to be, I wanted to hear from all of you, but is there a problem with my taking vitamin C, too much vitamin C? How do you feel about, what's your point of view on that? I would say yes and no. I don't want to say to anybody that taking nutrients is without risk. I would like to put that risk in context. Okay, how does the risk of taking vitamins compare to driving to the grocery store to buy groceries? Uh, crossing the street or uh, taking an aspirin for a headache. And, you know, my, in, in looking at this, my conclusion is that the risk of taking vitamins is comparable to the risk of driving to the store to get groceries. And therefore, I don't think we need to spend uh, huge amounts of money and to send SWAT teams into health food stores to arrest people, that this is a mis mis expenditure of, of, you know, resources. Precious resources. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So you're talking about acceptable risk. I'm talking words. about being real about what risks are out there. And unfortunately, when the FDA talks about risks and talks about the dangers of supplements and all that, there really isn't enough documentation, you know, to back up what they're saying. So um, what we need to do is put that in perspective and say, okay, let's look at the risk. Let's look at the, the, the benefits and the dangers and compare them to each other before we make a decision about whether or not we should outlaw entire technologies. Okay, hi. Hi. Listen, uh, do you take vitamins? Yes, I do. Well, uh, how long have you been taking your vitamins? Um, years, yeah. Probably 10, 20 years. And have you heard about what the FDA might be doing? Um, yeah, I, I understand that they're trying to regulate the sale of vitamins, and they're trying to take them off the shelves, um, and that you need a prescription from your doctor, I guess, to, to buy vitamins. And or, how do you feel about that? Um, I don't like it. You don't like why? Um, because I think you should be able to buy them in the, the stores and um, there's people available to help you if, if you have questions and concerns and um, I don't think we need to have a prescription to buy vitamins from our doctor. <laughs> FDA's goal is to ensure that that all consumers have access to the, the broad array of dietary supplements. We want to be able to assure that those products are safe and that if they make any health claims on the labels or in the catalogs or brochures, that those claims are scientifically valid. What started the FDA going this time was something, a bill that was passed in 1990 called the Nutritional Labeling and Education Act. And I say this time very intentionally because it's not the first time. In 1966, the FDA started doing this and sparked a 10-year, an extremely expensive battle between the supplement industry the consumers and the FDA, where the FDA arbitrarily declared vitamin A and vitamin D uh, to be toxic. You know, these are things you get in milk nowadays. Uh, to be toxic and therefore should not, should be taken off the market completely. Uh, but in 1990, Congress passed something called the L Nutritional Labeling and Education Act, which was mostly aimed at how much fat was in food, proper labeling for foods. And they also talked a little bit about health claims and directed the FDA to consider health claims in, in food and nutritional supplements. Well, the FDA did, and what they determined was that <laughs> amino acids, something that's found in uh, all proteins, uh, uh, you know, meats, cheeses, uh, rice and beans, uh, that uh, herbs that have a, uh, do not have a history of food usage, and high potency vitamins are being used for therapeutic purposes. And so they're going to assume that they're going to be used for therapeutic purposes. Uh, and once, if something's being used for a therapeutic purpose, it's a drug. If it's a drug, it must be approved by the FDA for that usage. None of this stuff's approved, therefore, it shouldn't be on the market. 